Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Gareth. I'm the senior project manager at Wessex Archaeology. I'm here to discuss uh, our work at a site down in Devon and uh, refer to the Um Just to give you a quick background, a quick idea of the archaeology that we found before I started about the community engagement. So the site's just to the southeast of Plymouth, um, and it's an enormous site. It's 485 hectares, and they're building a new town, uh, 5,500 homes, and it's a project that's going to take over probably 10 years um, to do. Just give you an idea of a schematic plan of what they actually hope to achieve. Um, and also to say that in sort of 2003, 2004, uh, sorry, 2013, 14, um, the uh, geophysical survey was undertaken uh, by Park and Clark of the entire site. So we've got a pretty good idea of what's there. Um, and we've been focusing our excavations in this area, referred to as phase 1.1. I don't know yet where 1.2, 2.1 is, but that's the, that, that's the idea at the moment we've been working in this area, the first initial phase of development. This is just to say that we are part of an enormous group. The, um, the town is being constructed by what's referred to as the Sherpa Consortium. Uh, these, uh, the home builders, Bovis, Linden, Taylor, Wimpy. Um, we're working with a suite of consultancies, um, as well as uh, media companies and the county council. So there's kind of an awful lot of stakeholders involved in this project, and they're all part of the, the pattern that we'll be discussing later. So to give you a very rough idea of the um, archaeology of the site, um, fairly prehistoric historic evidence, kind of uh, Mesolithic flint scatters in certain areas. We've had really lovely examples of um, polished axe, um, carinates bowl, six kilo carinates bowl from one feature at the southern edge of the site, which is extraordinary. Um, other um, features with Peterborough Ware. Um, in the northern upper part of the site, just looked. Um, we had two extant burrows that were um, hand excavated. Um, the, the first one uh, excavated in 2016 and then 17, give you an idea of the size. And the northern one, um, we did find this kind of stone uh, mortuary structure um, within the center, you can just see it within the center there. So covered by the barrow, um, the barrow mountains itself. Then the mortuary structure, when we lifted the stone, we found an inverted uh, food vessel, which also contained a, um, a bronze knife we've reconstructed. And while I talk, I'll talk about this later, but we have, we've also got um, three pillars of pattern for those. So incredible, incredible archaeology that we um, went through detailed excavation over, over a period of time. Other areas of the site, we found lots of Iron Age activity, lots of Romano British activity. And on this side, we've also got a 3D print of the bone cone, just to show you as we go around. And also an extraordinary find of um, spoon mold in, in one part of the site associated with the settlement, which you also have a, um, a 3D print of. Um, and then some other kind of examples of some of the finds we've got from the site. So generally an extraordinary site, um, also focused in the northern part of the site, what we refer to as the Valley of the Ancestors, this kind of funerary landscape. So you can see that we are in a slight valley, the two barrows are in a slight valley, separated by a, a stream, now canalised, but we found evidence of it, um, and we've got lots of paleo environmental evidence of it um, over the centuries and over the millennia. The blue dots that are shown are um, urns and unearned Bronze Age formations, mostly urn Bronze Age, most of which predate the barrows. We have two central formations from the two barrows, and the red dots relate to uh, Romano British inhumations. The ones on the south are predominantly north south aligned, the ones on the north are predominantly east west aligned. So, kind of with this kind of continual activity and focus in this area of funerary activity, just to bear that in mind. So, generally across the side which we've been excavating since we've been on the site since 2015, um, continued occupation, funerary landscape, RBE presence. And the site is enormous, so there's definitely continued um, potential. So obviously we're here to talk about community engagement, so talk about what we've done to date. Initially, the client were a little bit reluctant, I would say. They had a, um, a, uh, one of their conditions was for two open day events, and that's what we've done so far. Started off, they weren't that keen, to be honest. Um, my initial budget that I put in was half, so we kind of had to go with what we, what we had. 
Um, over 850 people turned up on the first day, and then they kind of took a step back and realized the potential of that many people visiting their site to come and view their houses. Um, started to get increased exposure. We have the TV crews turn up, as you kind of get on these kind of things. Um, lots of stuff, stuff going on. Local press turning up. We've been on the, in the local newspapers quite a lot recently. Um, also went national in some in terms of the fantastic um, misinterpretation of three Iron Age roundhouse that we found. Um, <laughs> and poorly worded, really. Um, to give you an idea of kind of, it was started to pick up. We started to get more traction with the press and, and the clients started to pick up and become a little bit more interested in what we were doing. That led the following year to open day two. Um, this time we had over 900. We turns out we picked a weekend that we were clashing with other local events and the weather wasn't that good, so was, we were hoping for over a thousand. But this time you can see that the event was much uh, bigger, much better, much better funded by the clients. Um, lots more involvement. So we had the local museum involved. We had local societies involved coming to do some of the um, um, presentations. We had an enormous amount of activity going on. Um, so kind of ramping up in its style and its um, presence. Then it started sinking with the client. We were getting increased value. So this is over a period of about three years we're talking about. Increased value. On their website, they started to, to then put archaeology on their website, which is great. Well, I haven't quite got to the point where they've got an archaeology section in terms of text. They're more happy for us to put it on our own website and then have links on their website, but we're getting there. They have a series of photos. They started to do um, interviews with people around the, working on the project. I was the second one, so they've chosen archaeology as the second um, step for that in terms of um, blocks. Increased school activities. Um, so we've spoken to about six different schools in the area. So we've got um, increased um, exposure there to local schools. And we've given literally 25 talks about this. We saw I'm actually going to go to one in a couple of weeks. Lots of groups, lots of state, um, groups from in and around Plymouth and all over Devon are actually really interested in this site. So we're starting to pick up and the clients are becoming very excited about it. Also in terms of the schools that we've on one of the, the southern the locations of the Southern Barrow, they, there's now a primary school. Um, this is, is around this time where we started to see the client of, and the stakeholders involved in the project. We're starting to understand the archaeology a little bit more and they were doing things without being told. This is the first badge that I've seen of the, the, the I saw at the primary school where they've included archaeology in it. We didn't find it. Circle, but it's nice to be <laughs> uh, in, in reality, they've chosen something else completely different. Um, but it was nice to be kind of have that thought process. Nobody asked them to do that, nobody told them to do that, they just started to go with it. Associated with the school and with the immediate development is also kind of something that I've never come across before, and I'd be interested to know if anybody else has. Um, with the media company, they are very reluctant to talk about death. We are always all of the press releases are very much about people who have lived in the landscape. It's incredibly difficult when you've got a funeral in the landscape. What they're really scared of is a headline like this. They've used, <laughs> the, they've used the term burial ground on numerous occasions through the media company and the client themselves. They phoned me up one day and they said, well, what's going on? We've heard there's a burial ground. It's not quite that, that bad. But to give you an idea of what Starting to get into their um, understanding of what archaeology is, but then through continual um, conversation. Off the back of that, in terms of our reconstructions that we've started to do, they're very much about people in the landscape, so people who have lived in the landscape. This is a representation of the chap that was found within the vessel with, underneath the uh, mortuary structure under the first barrel. You can see he's got this little knife, very tiny. Um, this was really nice. We did this is a full 3D model. Um, using photogrammetry, we're using a variety of techniques. Um, you've already seen some of our photogrammetry, which they are kind of picking up on as well. This one's really nice because we took a 3D model of the, uh, the PO's head. The guy who's run the site for the last four years, we actually kind of immortalized him. We, we haven't got quite got to the stage where we've got a, like a nine inch model of him, but we'll get there. But I found this really interesting because <clears throat> when we did the press release, I was interacting with the media companies, sort of trying to get to them, uh, get their understanding of what they thought of archaeology and what they, how archaeology is now involved within their wider land, uh, landscape and what they're doing. 
Um, and they were trying to say, no, 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 we're, we're not really involved, we don't really understand. But then, when I sent them this, they suddenly came back with loads of questions. Their way of dealing with um, press at the moment, when they view the press releases, is to send me a load of questions, I answer them, and then they'll form a, um, a statement around them. But as somebody, one of their junior staff, no background in archaeology, no understanding of archaeology before, was asking like, really interesting questions just by looking at one image. And I was finding this quite interesting, that I was getting this more and more with different stakeholders, with different parts of, people, uh, different parts of the company, companies involved in projects, kind of getting, becoming more and more engaged in the archaeology. This led to other reconstructions. So these are the two barrows. We know from the C14 dating, we've got a rough idea of the date. But when we started to produce these, um, it was very much about community, people in the landscape, people, community building these things, um, which again, they latched onto. So, I've probably gone incredibly quickly now, haven't I? Um, so, over the years, we have built up a really steady media interest, which has been multiple appearances on Radio Devon, lots of new newspaper pages. Um, we've also been in um, current archaeology, which is great. So, the media, uh, obviously, the company and the clients and the media company were all over this. That also led to a nomination. We didn't win, but it was lovely to be nominated. Um, which again the client were just um, dissatisfied and starting to start thinking about what we archaeology could do for their development. Um, lots of collaboration with the local museum. I took an email yesterday in terms of um, there's a new development called the Box in Plymouth and we're going to be heavily involved in that and we're working with Sherkids. Um, hopefully more and more um, school interest. This is quite nice. Most recently, uh, they buried a time capsule beneath the new school, or in the grounds of this new school, very close to one of the first, uh, the first barrow that we excavated. And as part of that, we actually put some archaeology back into the time capsule. So we included some Bronze Age archaeology, and one of the, the knife that's going around, we also put a version of that into the time capsule. As well. So there's a nice circularity around it. What I find really interesting with this is, uh, that's the local MP. When we were all asked to stand there, lots and lots of media, lots of people, the MP spoke and I spoke. Nobody else spoke. So I found that even that's quite interesting to me. They wanted the MP to speak and the archaeologist to speak. So. Oh, um, lots of school books. So the school books there, this is actually the end of the after school book. Oh, yeah. um, we're in contact with the school to come up with school books, um, school packs, you name it. 3D printing, we really want to do. Thank you. Um, lots of 3D printing. We've seen some going around. We all are certainly doing more. Uh, we definitely want to do more reconstructions. We're talking, we talked about doing VR landscapes. Um, the next big thing that we're in discussions with um, the client about is a big exhibition, probably in the school. And this is going to be like a two, three day event. Lots of um, uh, exhibitions going on, lots of um, banners, lots of information. Um, this is a really interesting one. They drop into conversation when you're in meetings. Uh, about a year ago, one of them just suddenly mentioned that when they come to build the town centre, they're going to build a museum for all the archaeology. And you're kind of looking down the table thinking, fantastic. Like, nobody's mentioned that before. Nobody's asked them to do that. They're just kind of coming out of the love themselves. This is a really nice one. This uh, um, is yet to be built. But on the southern edge of the site where they want the community areas, uh, they, they're going to start building follies, seated areas. They came up with themselves. Their, their designers came up with the idea of doing a one in the shape of a roundhouse. And it, it's going to be positioned about 20 metres away from our location of a uh, middle Bronze Age roundhouse that was discovered, recorded, and not excavated. So, again, nobody asked them to do that. It's just really exciting to see. <coughs> and the other um, thing is for lots of community, community excavations. We were due to have one last year, it didn't really happen, um, but there's much better sites in the, in the future. So, in terms of just lessons learned, for me, really good um, relationships. Con making those contacts, making those relationships, and the line thinking really early on. Having multiple meetings with the site, uh, the teams, has led to this kind of proactive approach to what we're doing. So definitely communication, sowing the seeds. So you see some of the 3D prints, we've done those off our own back. The, some of the um, reconstructions that we've seen, we've done off our own back. They weren't involved in the current archaeology um, article, but they are seeing the benefits of, of doing that. So then that, our, our take was, to put the work in up front and then get them engaged so we were commissioned to do more. Um, certainly in terms of improvements, so like the VR landscapes and those kind of things that we're really, really pushing within our team. 
um, just to try and show them new opportunities. Um, and actually, in terms of the um, following, we've also been in discussions with them about doing an interactive information panel um, where we would have sounds and 3D reconstructions and things like that. But when we build that 3D reconstruction, we'll do it in a way that is 3D, so you can look at it in a VR landscape, or you can just do a 2D print on the, on the panel itself. And definitely engagement in, in terms of increasing and pushing this widespread out outreach approach. Oops, sorry. <coughs> in my opinion, the stakeholders are now understanding that archaeology and heritage has a place and a legacy within their landscape. They are definitely seeing the benefits, look definitely by the sheer number of people. Their comment about creating more events is literally to get people to come to their site to look at houses, uh, which is, I find really interesting. Definitely building trust, really, really good uh, <coughs> things built. Um, with these uh, direct uh, clients, and they're definitely understanding the value, in my opinion. The reason why it's called Sherpa New uh, Community is we, the original brief was it was referred to as a Sherpa New Community, but we've shown that it's old and it's new. But it's saying that the future of the site is inherently and intrinsically linked to the past. It's not a new development by any stretch of the imagination, it's been there, back there for uh, centuries and thousands of years. And it's a landscape with saturated meaning and imbued with unsettled meanings. That's it.